So what I'd like to do is finish with the um, approval of the jury instructions, the preliminary jury instructions. I will make a record that Mr. Brooks did not um, file anything in writing regarding a proposed jury instruction as he was uh, advised to do yesterday um, if he wanted me to consider something. Um, I believe we had a very clear discussion on the record about that. He was uh, given copy, uh, a full copy of the draft preliminary jury instructions. He was part of that conference that we held yesterday. He, we, there was even a discussion regarding where he could find jury instructions with the legal materials that he has access to in the jail. Parents, um, you I, did not look at those. He take it with to his cell <laughs> He didn't even take them. Um, he has had the selected statutes that I referenced yesterday that also have the rules of evidence. Um, and so I wanted to make that record. Um, I don't have anything from him this morning uh, regarding any additional jury instructions. Um, has the state had an opportunity to now review the preliminary jury instructions with all the changes that were made yesterday? We have. Any objection to those? No. All right. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to unmute. Here we and go. If you have any objection uh, to the jury instructions that were uh, provided to you yesterday, I'm specifically looking for a yes or no answer, and I'll address further if need be based upon that yes or no. Uh, the microphone is unmuted. He's going to act like you can't hear her. Actually, we'll need to turn him up. It's not very loud. But yeah, obviously he did. Mr. Why would he be turning you around? One more time. You, uh, yeah, but you know what? Your volume's a little low, so we're going to um, have them adjusted over there and in here. So give us a second. Where is the microphone? It looks like it's in front of the monitor. So crazy. He's representing himself without his shirt on. This has to be a first. Mr. Brooks? Try again. Am I on the record? You are on the record. Ooh, that's loud now. We'll turn ours down. Mr. Brooks, do you, yes or no question, do you uh, have any objection to the preliminary jury instructions that were provided to you yesterday? Answer, please. All right, your objection is noted for the record, and uh, I'm just putting the mute back on. Um, he provided that objection without any legal basis. Shut down. Um, I'll, I muted him just so I could ask this question. I'll be right with you, Captain. Um, Mr. Brooks, do you have a legal basis to object? Again, to notice they can't hear him, but can't stop from talking. Hold on, it's the volume is not being appropriate at the moment. He's got Pisces tattooed on him. Oh my God, he's a horoscope believer. Try it again, sir. Yeah, his birthday is February 21st, so he's a Pisces. What a loser. Doesn't surprise me. Why doesn't it surprise you? Because he's an idiot? Um, I do appreciate <laughs> that he was able to hear me because he leaned in to answer, so I just want to make that record. I'll take, um, I'm going to go take a recess. Um, I'll just mute while we're doing that, um, just so I can uh, figure out what the audio issue is, and then we'll go from there the two room systems cooperating and we were having difficulty in this courtroom hearing Mr. Brooks. Um, I believe that issue has now been resolved. Um, when I needed to take the break for the audio issue, I also was advised by uh, the captain that Mr. Brooks was requesting medical attention and reporting a small cut to a finger as a result of 
uh, when he was removed from this courtroom and taken to the other courtroom. Um, I was further advised that there are no um, signs of blood and that when asked, he refused to show his hands. At this time, um, I'm not going to pause reaction. the proceedings further for him to be seen by <laughs> Joe Medical, but at an appropriate break, that would I'm be... <laughs> He's that upset. I also about his that Mr. Brooks has put his shirt back on. He continues to sit with his back to the oh camera. Oh my God, Brooks, man! I, I can't keep my band aid mine badly. You face uh, <laughs> the camera so that you are facing the court. You can see and hear. Um, I, it's my understanding you uh, were not willing to cooperate with being shackled, and for the moment. Um, you are not, but at this point, given your conduct from before, um, I'm going to require, um, well, after we take the next break, that the Sheriff's Department um, put you in the chair face forward and with shackles on your ankle as you are in custody, and that is appropriate. Oh, my God, please do that. Strap now, the fuck down. I want to turn back to the issue with the jury instructions, Mr. Brooks. You indicated you had an objection. Um, my next question to you is, what is the legal basis for the objection? I'm going to unmute so you can answer. Go ahead, sir. I object. I have a boo-boo. You need to turn around so I can hear you. Part of the issue is he's also not facing the microphone. And so I need to hear him and he needs to turn around. I stubbed my toe. Mr. Brooks, I'll ask you once again, what is the legal basis for your objection to the jury instructions? Objection. I have a mosquito bite. I'll ask a third and final time, sir. What is the legal basis for your objection to the jury instructions? I object. My tummy hurts. I can't even hear what you're saying. Do you want your headset? Mr. Brooks, I can hear the deputies over there. Um, I know they can hear me. That's been confirmed. Um, there is the headset available to you should you wish to use it. If you can't hear, I would ask that you put them on. This is so typical. I'm able to hear he said to the deputy, put them down. I don't want them. Yeah, right. I can't um, hear, but I'm not using again, the headset. So I continue with my record. He did not answer the question, what is the legal basis for the objection? I asked that question three times based upon that non-response. Um, his objection is noted for the record, and I will approve the preliminary jury instructions um, that are on file. How am I supposed to put on the headset when I have I injury to my pinky? Um, all parties have been given copies of those. Before I turn to the motion for uh, reconsideration, um, you raised this earlier, at least the topic of it. Mr. Brooks um, presented a filing to the court this morning. I asked the bailiffs uh, before the case was called at 8.30 if Mr. Brooks had any paperwork and to ask him if he had any filings. He then provided this piece of paper um, and it was photocopied. Actually, it was uh, date stamped, then photocopied for the parties. It may have already been scanned in, I'm not sure, but it certainly will be. Um, I've had an opportunity to review this document. Um, Based upon my review, I don't believe any response is even required. Um, it's his affidavit. He's providing certain disclosures, but there's nothing about that uh, that requests any relief from the court. Certainly no legal um, statutes or constitutional provisions are referenced. Uh, to me, it just looks like an objection that he's filing, and that will be, of course, noted for the record. Um, Attorney Opper, uh, anything you would want to add to the Most record? of it is just a picture of taking. me, no, a drawing I of me getting also stabbed. also viewed this as, because he labeled it's a it chainsaw objection on my back. by <laughs> affidavit, I think. 
my interpretation is he was trying to make a record for appeal that he objects to the court's previous ruling. I don't think there's anything the court needs to do with this document. Yeah, I noticed time. all of his motions okay. never like Thank seek you. to gain anything. It's just like, I don't like what's happening. Objection, I don't like this. Brooks like, muted so okay. that I can get We're through still this gonna process do it. orderly, efficiently, when necessary. I will unmute him if the court has questions. All right, Attorney Opera, I have read through the um, motion. Is there anything you want to add to what you have put in your filing? Tapping his little girly well, hands with his long nails on the table. That, um, since I filed that, the events of the last couple of days, I think, further support my request. Not that um, the defendant's behavior in the courtroom has anything to do with the broadcasting of victims and witnesses, but I think the stress that is going to be placed upon them potentially by Mr. Brooks' behavior will be additional challenge to them as they testify. And um, so not having their faces displayed, I think would- Yeah, fair. The foresight she has here, because she's victims. totally right. We see him fucking put a lot of the victims through Mr. undue Brooks, trauma the from their cross-examination. Um, do you have mm -hmm. a position on the state's request in their motion for reconsideration. I'm looking for a yes or no answer. If you, I'll unmute and provide that to me. Go ahead. I didn't hear what they said. I just put the headphones on, so I didn't even hear what, they, what she said. Um, sir, oh it's goodness, a written document guy. that was filed and you were provided uh, a copy of that yesterday. We took a recess yesterday so it could be served upon you. If you haven't read it, that's your choice. What I'm asking you is, do you have any position on their request to, for this court to reconsider um, the denial of the courts, sorry, the denial of the state's request to prohibit the photography and video recording of victims and witnesses and specifically their faces while they testify. A ruling was already, uh, we already talked about that. You already ruled that uh, the victims and witnesses will, will be shown. That was already ruled on. Oh my you God. Are, but they filed a motion for This dude has the comprehension a, skills of like a toddler. Document, uh, he didn't listen to a word. To a, a toddler's giving him too much credit. He has the comprehension skills uh, of like a goldfish. He didn't listen to a word she fucking said. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> everything's supposed to be public. This is a public trial. Yes, sir. I, they I, are re asking to reconsider that. Oh, my God. Even the need to reconsider what you already ruled on at this point as far as to, to that to that particular issue. I take because you are so defiant, the they don't want victims to fucking be in Anybody your presence. Essentially watch the trial. Um, and like I said, as far as with, with the uh, technology that we're in now, if they have to be sworn in by name. That you pause this in itself. Opera is I like the judge should have actually fucking reconsidered this because he does very much like re traumatize a lot of these victims. It's crazy that she just like cast this aside and this whole about them being on camera that's not the fucking issue that she's raising. It's that. You are such an asshole. These victims have already been tortured by you once. And we hear a lot of victims say, like, I'm still going through. You can tell that they are very bothered by having to be questioned by this man. It's crazy to me that in this country, like, Erica Patterson alone should not have been questioned by this guy. It's crazy that they, I, I mean, I, I guess it's, it's something they can do. It's law, but it's it's insane to me that they're that they... He has the right to fucking put these people through all this stuff. And he clearly exerts that right and knows what he's doing. God, it's fucking disgusting. Makes them easy to, if somebody wanted to pull them up or find them or find out who was testifying at any given time testimony is given, it'd be pretty easy for them to be found and to be seen. So, I mean, that's just... The age we're in anyway as far as as far as with social media and google and, and and all these different things we got all this technology basically at our fingertips so i i don't i don't understand uh how it needs to be changed at this point when it was it was already ruled that 
this is a public trial. There's going to be a lot. This of is the one and only time he own. ever respects one of her rulings because it's in his favor. Why not keep everything public the way that is intended to be? And because of the fact that you've already ruled on it. <laughs> yeah, the literally record. the only time he ever respects one of her rulings. <laughs> Let's keep it the way it is. All right, thank you, Mr. Brooks. I appreciate your legal analysis of that and your factual analysis of the prior ruling that this court gave. I thought you did an excellent job making some very good points, many of which I uh, relied upon previously. Yeah, look how respectful um, he can be when the court's findings are in his... That I made previously. <laughs> but uh, hang on, before you play again. Um, you can he's capable of conducting himself respectfully and making well-founded arguments when they're in his favor he just did it just now yeah so clearly he has the capability to conduct himself respectfully and actually make coherent arguments but only when they're actually in his favor when everything goes against it he just panics and goes into fucking rebellious mode when things aren't going his way he disrupts yeah, yeah, there you go. Today is one that is vested with the sound discretion of the court. Um, I would note the state uh, does rely upon a case. Um, the case is not new, so it's clearly something that was in existence at the time of the prior motion. That's Estes versus State of Texas. Um, it's 381 U.S. 532, but I would note it's from 1965. Um, in 1965, I would say even in the 1980s here in Waukesha County, there was really a presumption that cameras not be allowed in courtrooms at all. We have moved vastly away from that over the course of the last couple decades and certainly since 1965. Um, I am certainly mindful of the potential stress that it may cause for victims and other witnesses uh, to come into court um, and testify and to have their images uh, broadcast as this trial is broadcast, um, not just locally, but nationally and frankly, anywhere in the world, anyone with a computer would want to watch. Um, I would note though that prior to the point in time when this case came to trial, this court took significant efforts to keep victims' names private there's a victim so why not stick that with that file this court signed an order and even required mr brooks to not disclose that information that was one of the conditions set uh when bond was uh initially set now that was by a court commissioner of course but that's still uh, a ruling that this court adopts um in addition um I believe I've done up to this point everything that I could to preserve their privacy. Um, I don't frankly want to create an issue that could be an appellate issue. I think there, oh. uh, this potentially could be that if I limit uh, the capturing of victim and witnesses images. I am aware of Marcy's law. Uh, certainly aware of the provisions that the state cites. Um, but the fact remains, the time has now come for this trial to be conducted. This is a public trial. The right to a public trial is not only for the defendant, but the state, but the public. Um, all of the names are a matter of public record. This court obviously went through all of the names of the witnesses uh, during the jury selection process. Uh, it, in the jury instruction, the names of all the victims will be read. Alma is a cucumber because things are going his way. It's time to put the, that information uh, in a public document and on the record because the time for trial has come. The ca cameras in the courtroom not only facilitate 
the viewing of a public trial, trial where anyone could walk in to this courtroom, space permitted, to watch. But it facilitates victim rights as well. And that is because there are a large number of victims in this case. This court could not have all the victims and the public and the media who wanted to be here present. Frankly, yeah, this all makes it's sense. Because of how this court has allowed the proceedings to be live streamed, that we don't have even a full courtroom here today. There is no doubt this case has received great public interest. But this is a case that the state brought charges, and rightly so. I understand it won't be easy, it may be messy, uh, it may even be stressful, but it's important to the integrity of these proceedings, the perception of how things are conducted in this courtroom, that all witnesses, that all victims, with the exception of the one thing I accepted previously, be viewed in its fullness to the public. I maintain the exception for juvenile witnesses. Um, they are in a special category as minors, and they, of course, uh, when they, if and when a juvenile witness testifies, may only be- Golly, she is from, so well-spoken. Uh, like she goes on these long their faces tangents. And everything she's blood. saying is Again, making sense, but also really well communicated. But yeah. in my humble opinion, the right to a public trial um, supersedes <laughs> the other provisions, and especially in a case such as this, it's important. Um, I would add to the record um, some of the points Mr. Brooks made. Not only are these names all a matter of public record, um, the technology that we have at our fingertips, there's Google, there's social media, it's very easy to identify these individuals and search for them in other ways. I'd also add that there have been a number of news reports, media accounts, newspaper articles about victims, naming them. Um, I'm aware of one such broadcast this morning on Channel 4. I cannot presume that all victims, all witnesses want this. And I want to keep this trial going, and um, that's what we will do. So the request is denied. All right, I believe, let me just get back to my first note that I had for this morning, that we've covered all of the outstanding issues. Uh, but I did not hear if you, uh, I was kind of overhearing that you addressed the filing that I filed this morning. I, I did. didn't hear exactly what was said. I'm just making sure that you know that I'm not trying to interrupt. I just want clarification on what I may have missed. Um, I'll tell you what I uh, ruled previously. I've reviewed the filing. It's entitled Objection by Affidavit to the State's Response and the Court's Opinion and Order and Defendant's Disclosure Statement by Affidavit. It's an affidavit. It does not request any relief from the court. Um, I have interpreted what you have filed um, as an objection to be noted on the record. It has been accepted. It has been filed and that your objection is noted. The court need not take any specific action as it relates to it. Um, I further indicated that, again, no relief was requested, but also there's no statutory or constitutional or law uh, that you cite to that I could even um, interpret as a request for relief. So that's how I'm going to address that uh, filing, sir. It's noted for the record. Can I say one thing about that? Quickly, sir. I need to keep going. I was, I was um, filing that paperwork, um, I would say, pursuant to uh, federal, the federal rules of criminal procedure under Rule 12.4 about the disclosure statement. All right, I'll um, citing a law, this record, is rare. Sir, but it was not in your filing. So that's a judicial determination, Your Honor? I believe I had one other thing. Oh, I did want to put Just on the record. It. 
Um, and yeah, we're going back to the disrupting because he doesn't understand. Audio, I did advise the sheriff's department to uh, let Mr. Brooks know to ask him on my behalf if he wanted to come back into this courtroom. Um, my understanding is he declined. No, that is not that is not accurate, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks. Um, the reason, Mr. Brooks. I would, I would just want Hold on, I'm going to mute you for a second unless you stop and listen to me. I just heard what you said, but I just. I'm not asking for a response, not, sir, Mr. Brooks. It's not, okay, it's not accurate, you're interrupting. Your Hold on. You pause it. You're interrupting me, sir. So yeah, I mean, we just saw night and day, right? Things were going in his way. He was silent. He's quietly going through his paperwork. He's respectful. He takes the time to ask if he can speak. And then the second he doesn't get what he wants, we're immediately back to disrupting. It's like, yep. it's like he, he gets scared or panics when he doesn't understand something. It's like he doesn't know how to process those emotions. It's, it's like he's, he's so petrified of the emotion of fear that he just immediately goes back to what's familiar, right? It's like anger. You know, you know that movie Inside Out from no. Pixar? No, I've never uh, seen it. So it's a movie where inside somebody's head, there are characters that are representative of the emotions. And one, one of the characters is in the theoretical driver's seat. And in children, it's like happiness is the driver because they're primarily happy and that's what's guiding their life. And you end up going into the father's head and you find that anger is the one who's in the driver's seat because, like, for men in particular, it's so, like, commonplace for the only acceptable emotion to be anger. Like, there's almost like a narrative put into place prematurely that, it's not okay for men to be sad or fearful or re really express any emotion beyond anger. And like, we're seeing this now with Daryl, like part of this is, is very much like his own perceptions of what masculinity should be. Like, I'm not trying to go down the whole road of toxic masculinity, but I do think it's a factor of how Daryl conducts himself. Like suffice it to say, Daryl puts so much importance on, like, the rough and tough exterior. These, like, self-aggrandizing delusions that he's just, like, he's in the bloods and he's a gangster. That he's, he's completely ruled out even the possibility of just accepting the fear as an emotion. Or, or, I mean, I guess he, he does, like, the whole gangster cry. So he allows himself to be sad. But the second he even starts to experience fear he just immediately juts himself back to anger yeah you're right. even when he even when he cries it's like it's like gangster tears you know what i mean like he weeps openly weeps for his children yet he has been nothing but the absentee father their entire lives because it's like it's easier to lie your, lie to yourself that that you have a special bond with like your youngest daughter then it is to accept that you were a slime ball before you murdered six people. <laughs> like she hated him then and she hates him now. And Daryl's brain will take exhaustive steps to cope with that reality. Even if it means even if it means like like bending his reality right in front of it, right in front of his face. You know? Yeah, I hear you. He definitely uh, he definitely suppresses things. There's definitely like deep psychological ninjutsu going on there. Yeah, ninjutsu is a good way to put it. Yeah, he just like he, he immediately files any emotion as unacceptable. Just goes right to I'm a gangster. I'm a thug. I'm fucking angry, and then disrupts the proceedings because of it. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? Yeah. Sad. I wasn't looking for a response. Um, I'm happy to ask you the question myself on the record for you to answer it. Um, I will give you the opportunity to come back into this courtroom. You have demonstrated that you can make cogent, coherent, articulate uh, arguments on the record. You just did that. 
Um, you've been respectful for the time being. Um, I will ask you. Yeah, because things are going as well. And now, yep, we're going we're right back to, to it. That question. Not until I can receive medical treatment for the bruise that I have. Yep, see, we're right arm, here. And the cut. You said, you just said a while ago on the record that you cannot see blood. That's because I wiped it on my pants. And you can still see the blood in the cut and a big bruise right here on my arm. I was told that the nurse would be coming in to see me. And oh then I was God. told. I no, pause it again. At the next. To call this tone deaf would be like the understatement of the century. This dude ran over children. Now he's got the audacity <laughs> to complain about a paper cut. Like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. And that bruise, again, bruises don't fucking happen that fast. It takes days for, like, like the oxygen has to die or something. I don't remember. This guy is demanding medical treatment for a boo-boo. Like you said, man, he's, he's been coddled. It's all this. It, that's what this is. I've seen kids fuss less over, like, a skimmed knee, <laughs> which is way worse than this fucking quote-unquote injury. And he's treating and this. When, he's treating this so much like he's in grade school, like like yeah. Dor Doro's the teacher, and he's like, "You know, I'm listening, teacher. I don't, I don't like math class." Okay, we well, yeah. got to go in timeout, and then he's like, "I'm supposed to see the nurse because I got a boo boo. I'm supposed to go <laughs> to the nurse's office and get a band aid from my boo boo." Yeah, it's almost like he's going back to his inner child. You know what I mean? Like this is very much. <laughs> reminiscent of him how he acted in school most likely it's like we talked about in another video where we said that like he never really grew up from high school like so much of his personality is is cognizant <laughs> of his adolescent phase like he never actually matured he's four <laughs> years old and and still in his head a fucking 16 year old that or maybe uh <laughs> it could be like a psychological coping mechanism yeah i think you're like, right it's like oh what do you have to say for yourself now that you've ran over 68 people and killed six people? Uh, I I want Baba and I want to go play. <laughs> yeah. Again, you know, it's like it goes back to he's just terrified and uh, has to cope with that somehow. <laughs> so he finds the safety of childhood and this is like he's back in school. Yeah. If and, if and when this nurse actually shows up, Imagine her react. Her eyes are gonna roll inside of her. It's gonna be like the Undertaker from <laughs> WWE. <laughs> you know, and he does the fucking. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> She's gonna be doing fucking dead man eyes. Her eyes are gonna roll back in her head so far. <laughs> <laughs> I wish a nurse would walk on camera now in like a cliche nurse outfit, like from the. 60s with like the the white thingy on her head uh that'd be awesome <laughs> just kneel down next to him like carefully putting a little band-aid on his boo-boo yeah <laughs> recess which we just took it i know it was technical difficulties why you call it the recess but that was more than enough time for me to at least be seen at least get the the uh, cut cleaned out and get it bandaged at least at minimum that and for somebody to look at this bruise that was that was my position on why i was not yet ready to come back into the court because i felt look like at a bruise what are they going to do for the bruise sir All right, mr brooks i understand your request i'm denying the request to take an adjournment or i'm sorry to take a break at this time oh what a legend uh, good for you daro ask for a break i was just saying that at the time that there was the technical difficulty recess before before you even called that, Your Honor, I was told that a nurse was coming in at that time. But Ian. then when you called the recess for the technical difficulty, I was then told that I would have to wait until another recess to be able to be seen by the nurse. So why my, my thing was Mr. I wanted Brooks, to get you've seen made your by record, the nurse. Okay, I don't need you to go further. Yeah, he, this is just disrupting record. again. Thank you for the time being. I want you to be aware, sir, I was advised regarding the cut, the bruises, new information. I 
uh, made a determination that you would be seen at yeah, the, the next fact that we can see it as evidence break. that it doesn't need treatment. Um, my you perspective, fucking idiot. a small cut and a bruise is not going to hold up the start of uh, bringing the jurors in and advising them of the preliminary jury instructions. If that means the next break we take is Baby's for fussing. lunch, and that's when you are seen. He's getting um, fussy. Then that's what will happen. So um, Daro's going to have to put him over his over his shoulder and burp him. Anything you had on your list. Nothing else on my list, but you want to give Mr. Brooks one more opportunity to change out of his orange jail uniform. Excuse me. <clears throat> that I would give him an opportunity uh, to do. Uh, Mr. Brooks, would you like to go back so and epic. change into your suit? Uh, my position has not changed whatsoever, <laughs> and it will not change. That Both so my stubborn. Right to come into court how I would like to. Just like I should be awarded the right to be present for every proceedings in this trial. All right, um, I'm muting him again. I uh, note your objection. I will take that as a clear indication. You do not want to go uh, back to the jail to change into uh, street or civilian clothing that you are exercising your right to dress in the jail attire. Um, all right, then with that, um, I am going to uh, just take a short recess just to have the jurors brought in. Mr. Brooks needs his objection sign. We'll make sure he has it. Thank you. <laughs> Love the objection <laughs> sign. Uh, should get him a sign that says don't consent. <laughs> Hold okay. that thing up every Let me two actually seconds. go back on the record for a second. Mr. Brooks, when the jury comes in, I am going to read through the preliminary jury instructions. Um, since those have been approved by the court, um, if you happen to raise your sign, I'll note it for the record, but I'm not going to ask you for any type of argument on that because we've already had that opportunity to do so. Oh, um, nice. Take me some time not even going to unmute him. Instructions. I, I don't know if that will take us to the lunch Shut hour. Shut it down, not. Dara. The state should be potentially prepared to go through its opening. Um, Mr. Brooks, if we do get to that point where the state is giving its opening um, and you have an objection, you need to write down the objection in addition to raising your uh, hand and I will rule on the objections after the closing statement. So you must write down uh, the basis for the objection and what you're objecting to in addition to holding up your sign. That's the procedure that we will follow. I wish she had stuck with this. Right, <laughs> Hold up your sign. Until the jury comes in. <laughs> he goes! Oh, yes. Oh, it's so epic. He, he was listening this time. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> he just keeps it up. It's a standing objection to everything. <laughs> I, I saw a clip. He puts it in his pants at one point to <laughs> keep it up. <laughs> uh, he might as he well have that it. taped to his forehead. Yeah. <laughs> Wrote it on his forehead, a permanent marker. I do not consent. I do not understand the nature and cast of the charities. Uh, look at him. Look at him going off. What a pathetic man. Uh, this has been fun, man. <laughs>